Hi there, welcome, thanks for being here. Um, so we've, we've just got together today because we wanted to um, talk about this wonderful piece of furniture which we are showing you today and uh, we've very kindly been offered this space to show you this wonderful piece of furniture, how it would look inside a beautiful uh, lounge. And we've got Neil here and Fifi here. Neil actually made the furniture and you're a local artist, aren't you? An artisan, That's maker. Correct. Yeah. Yeah. And where are you based? I'm based down near Barclay. Oh, right. Okay. And so um, what gave you the inspiration for this piece of furniture? Um, well, it was an experiment, really. Um, I was experimenting with having solid blocks and taking certain pieces away from it to reveal the interior. Uh, it was always uh, originally going to be made out of wood, but as the process went down and the sketches developed, um, I decided that I'd have a go at um, making it out of metal. I also um, love the, the finish that you get from rich colours of uh, rust. Uh, so I thought with the metal, I could actually produce it so it looked like a, a solid block of steel that had rusted and then all these pieces would scoop out and um, and then reveal the, the, the shiny interior. Yeah, so you've done this wonderful catalogue of uh, evidence here of how you created it and um, it shows that it was a very, very long, drawn-out process and you say it sort of organically developed as you were going along, so... Parts of the process just um, manifested during during development. Is that right? Yes. Yeah. I'd never done anything in metal before, so every single process was completely new to me. Um, I took advice from people, um, and then just really went from there. So you didn't have to add anything to it when you put it outside to let it rust. The only thing I did um, to aid the cleanup process later to produce the scoops, um, I put um, a lithium grease on the scoops just to protect it from the weather so that um, uh, when it came to um, sealing it I could just clean off all the lithium grease and, yeah, I uh, understand. and, and then that would um, leave the scoops clean. Was it always intended to be a coffee table? Was that your end goal? Yes it was, yeah. yeah. Right, and you've used a toughened glass type of thing, have you? Yes, yeah, a toughened glass top, yeah. Yeah, well that's yeah. lovely. So I, I is it very heavy as an item no, of furniture? No, it's not. No, it's not heavy. I can pick it up quite easily myself. Um, two people, easy, uh, you know, just because of the, 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 the shape of it. But, um, yeah, you know, yeah. it's very, very light, really. So would you say it took you the best part of a year to make this object? How long would it no, take you to make um, that? Um, if I was to sort of put it all together as one block, I'd say I did it in maybe five weeks, the actual making, five to six weeks, uh, and then I left it outside in the garden for probably another 10 weeks to 12 weeks just to achieve the uh, the finish. Did it rain a lot during that time? It did, yeah. <laughs> it did. It did, And yeah. was it fun? But I, also, I was also chucking on buckets of lemon juice and anything else that could aid um, really? the, the, the rusting, yeah. And did it turn out the way you originally envisaged it? or uh, Better, actually. Better. Yeah, yeah, the colours were just superb, yeah. And so how is that protected now? So it's not going to be like making a mess? Uh, it's got uh, quite a few layers of, uh, of uh, lacquer on it now, which would completely seal it. Right, So, okay. So it stops the, the rusting process. Yes, and how, how often would you say you get these um, sort of inspirational ideas for creating wonderful pieces of art oh, in all the furniture? Time. All the time. You do. Mm -hmm. So if somebody wanted to uh, come to you with their own sort of inspirational ideas, you could bring it to life for them, maybe. Yes, yeah, of course. You could. Yeah. Excellent. Yeah. Well, that's good. So you're based down in Berkeley. You're a local um, entrepreneurial um, artisan. And uh, so anyone can contact you and yes, of course, um, yeah. come and have you do their creations for you. Yes. Excellent. Brilliant. Well, thanks for letting us know more about it. Is there anything else you'd like to Thank tell us much. in the secret process of making it before we finish? Um, well, the uh, the process is all described in the in the log. So, um, would the person who bought it be able to have the log as a sort of a thing that went with it? Or yes, I don't see why not. Yeah, yeah. It sort of yeah. adds a little bit of extra 
fluidity yeah. to it, doesn't it? Yeah, so it just shows the process. It's got the, uh, the, the sketches at the start, which were just ideas that were, were coming out. Um, I think and as a, as <coughs> developing. a provenance um, mm. document, it's yeah. absolutely amazing, it is. isn't it's it? Fantastic. What a lot of work yeah. and skill that's gone into that. So we just go through the sketches and then um, maquettes and just models, just playing with the shapes and the scoops. Though these are really tiny, but they were just to sort of hammered out just to see how things would work. And then um, when it came to actually um, the full scale, I mocked it up just using hardboard and um, tin foil uh, uh, suspended on wires where I could shape it to see what I wanted. And then once I got the shape right, I could cut along the wires, fold it flat, and then that would give me the shape for my templates to actually um, cut the steel. Wow. And then from there on, it was just a case of bash it out with a hammer until they all fitted together. Was that fun? It was very noisy. <laughs> very, Did it take with a lot of aggression? Yeah, very noisy. Did it noisy. take a long time? Um, yeah, the shaping probably took me about two weeks to get it to a point where, so on here, uh, this was done just in the, in the divot of a, a log, just to get the basic shape. And then, um, then I put it on top of a steel dolly just to hammer it out. And then of course you get, good, get it so you, it's nice and smooth then. And then uh, um, because I'd already made the templates, um, once I got it to the shape, um, they all fitted together anyway. And then it could all be tacked and plasma cut and then uh, all the sides you then say joined things on. like plasma cut and I have no clue what that means <laughs> so either. the plasma cut was just a way of so when I got when I joined everything together of course it was all uh, it wasn't all in the same plane to, to uh, put a flat sheet on so I had to cut it so that this would then be all in the same plane and then you so get to the point where you can uh, then have, have have this flat shape yeah. to join the panels onto the sides. So take us to the final uh, page then, so we can finish on a visual of the actual piece. So this is where it was rusting, Oops. with the lithium grease, and then that's the final piece. Uh -huh. of the and was it designed specifically to look like it was a giant bite out of an apple? Was that the? It was, yeah. Um, like I said, I, I, I wanted to work with um, a solid shape and then just removing parts to reveal the inner. Uh, and it was actually while I was eating an apple that I came up with the idea of the teeth marks and the scoops mm. and then developed it from there. Excellent. Well, thank you very much for okay. um, telling us about it. And uh, it is actually available for for purchasing at the moment in Fifi's shop, isn't it? Yes, it is. So um, <laughs> by all means, contact us for more information. And uh, thanks for listening today. Um, would you, you. Would you um, be prepared to come along and talk about other uh, inventions that you have going on yes. and other pieces? Yes, of course. Because you do a lot of sort of normal things, don't you? Like making doors and things like that. I do, yeah. And um, is it a real pleasure for you to step outside and to do the things that come from your actual creativity, your creative yes, it's Yes, it's always nice to do speculative pieces. Yeah. Um, uh, as opposed to, um, you know, commissions that sort of doors, windows, anything like that, the joining inside. Mm. Yeah. Once you can sort of start concentrating on your own ideas, and finishes and the texture and colours. And how so important do you think finishes are these days? Do you think that's the way people important. want to go with things yeah, these days? Yeah, I think um, you get beautiful woods and veneers, but I think people are looking for something a little bit more these days. Mm. A bit outside the, uh, yeah, the, the yeah, box. Yeah, yeah. And, and these finishes are out there. So and you can use those and you're, you're excited to use them. Yes, yeah, yeah. very much so. Fantastic. Ooh, lovely. <laughs> Thank you. Thank very, you. very interesting and lovely. Thank you for talking to us today and Welcome. we'll Thank share you. it all over our social media. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you so much. Bye for now. Bye. Bye.